in another one minute, we are good to go live. Yes, we'll start, we'll start at sharp seven. All right. So it's sharp seven, shall we start? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. I am Batul from Clernet. I would like to take a minute to introduce our platform Clernet to everyone present here with us today. Clernet is India's one of the largest digital live CME platform where doctors generate their medical content. I would like to welcome the organizer, patrons, and the speaker, along with that, the participant doctors in today's live webinar presented by Medicine INC, Indian Medical Association, Junior Doctors Network, Tamil Nadu Hedil, presents a workshop on career guidance post MBBS Series 1, PLB exams. Team Clonet is happy and proud to be the digital partner for this webinar. Please have a glimpse on the video that is going to be played. Now, without any further delay, I would like to welcome a very renowned personality, Dr. Venkatesh Karthikayan, sir, to please take over and proceed with the webinar. Sir, over to you. Uh, thank you so much, sir, Badu. Very good evening, everyone. Myself, Dr. Venkatesh Karthikayan, MD Community and Family Medicine postgraduate resident from Ames, Patna. I'm glad to see that young doctors, more than 300 people, have joined from different parts of the country in today's webinar. In the past one year, IMA Junior Doctors Network have organized a series of webinars for the benefit of our young doctors. In the recent times, we have collaborated with Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, AIMS Delhi, AIMS Patna, IAPSM, CAHO, Star Health Insurance, Max Group of Hospitals, and with many leading national and international faculties. We got excellent feedback that our webinars are very useful for young doctors, and hence we are continuing this webinar series. As MBBS students and as junior doctors, we always wonder about the career opportunities in UK as a doctor. Though we are interested in exploring more about the black route, many of us don't have a proper guidance. We do have several questions in mind, like how will be my life once I get to UK? How many years I should be there to get properly trained? Can I return back to India? How, how does the system work there? How much money it would cost? How much I would earn? So these are the various questions in the minds of young doctors. To answer all these questions, the Indian Medical Association Junior Doctors Network Tamil Nadu is organizing this webinar on the topic Career in UK, uh, the Career Guidance Program. I would like to thank our speaker, Dr. Ganesh sir from Mizoram for spending his precious time with us today. Welcome sir. Our IMA JDN is Tamil Nadu is do, doing this Career Guidance Series for the past one year under the guidance of Dr. Abul Hassan sir, who's a senior pediatric surgeon from Erod. Sir is the president elect of IMA Tamil Nadu and the chairman of IMA MSN and JDN Tamil Nadu. Sir has been involved in various welfare activities for medical students and young doctors and has always been our motivating force. Thanks sir for being a great source of support to us. Now I request you to uh, bless us with your welcome address. Over to you sir. Uh, sir, kindly unmute yourself sir. Thank you Vangadesh. Uh, good evening all of you. Dr. Ganesh, Vangadesh, Raghu and uh, Clarinet and all my delegates who are joined. IMA JDN is uh, doing this wonderful work of, you know, kind of uh, helping our uh, PG aspirants, the career aspirants in a big way, continuously conducting these kind of seminars. Uh, this is very important uh, in today's scenario, you know, because, uh, you know, we are, uh, India is producing large number of MBBS graduates and the opportunities in India 
uh, you know, are uh, remaining static over the years. But, uh, you know, so naturally, uh, the opportunities uh, become very, very highly competitive here. We have to look upon other avenues, other doors to open. One such thing is getting career in uh, uh, other countries, overseas countries like UK and US. Uh, keeping this in mind, uh, IMHADN is uh, you know continuously conducting career guidance uh, sessions, webinars, cracking uh, PLABs and the uh, USMLEs and other competitive examinations. This is one of the important uh, guidance and assistance we are giving to young doctors uh, from IMHADN platform. I'm very happy that uh, our boys Vengadesh and Raghu have taken up this uh, in a very serious manner. And also, I thank uh, Dr. Ganesh uh, for accepting our uh, offer and spending his valuable time with uh, our delegates and help uh, help them to get their uh, you know kind of uh, whatever goals uh, they have in mind to be achieved through this uh, seminar. Uh, I once again wish all the uh, delegates who have joined here all the very best and uh, wish them a very bright future. And uh, I request uh, Dr. Ganesh also to you know in future also to join us in having this kind of uh, webinars to help our younger generation of the country. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Over to you, Dr. Vangadesh. Thank you so much, sir. As you always say, career guidance for young doctors is one of your main goals, and we are trying to work constantly towards it. I sincerely thank Ganesh, sir, for being a part of this initiative. And sir has also uh, told that he is going to extend us his support in this uh, career guidance series. Thank you so much, sir. Now, I request uh, the convener of MSN Tamil Nadu, Dr. Raghunandan, to give his opening remarks. Good evening, sir, and good evening to all the delegates who are attending this session. Myself, Dr. Raghu, uh, State Convener of IMA MSN Tamil Nadu and National Joint Sec Academics of IMA MSN. I sincerely thank Dr. Ganesh, sir, for joining with us today for this wonderful session on career guidance and in Specifically, we are going to be discussing about the PLAB exams. As uh, Vengdes sir told, we are always working on the career guidance and especially uh, foreign opportunities. And uh, since uh, medical students are largely graduated every year, we are focusing more on uh, their opportunities post MBBS. That is the main goal of our guide as well as mentor, Dr. Abul Asan sir too. We are trying to get a link with uh, I Commission of England and also with the UK to have a collaboration for uh, career opportunities for the Indian medical graduates, especially from Tamil Nadu, to get a job opportunity as well as to pursue their postgraduate in UK. And today we have Ganesh sir, who is a associate professor of Department of Community Medicine from Zoram Medical College in Mizoram. Sir, as undergraduate from Raja Mutaya Medical College in Chidambaram, he has been working in the field of HIV and AIDS since 2006 in India. He has worked in the Tamil Nadu State AIDS uh, Control Program as a STI Medical Officer, Antiretroviral Therapy Medical Officer in Madurai GH, and HIV Community Care Center Medical Officer. After his graduation, he completed his fellowship in HIV medicine a course conducted in partnership with International Training and Education Center for Health from Government Hospital of Thoracic Medicine, Tambram, which is a center of excellence for HIV treatment. He has been selected as a best outgoing fellow and worked as a clinical trainer in International Training and Education Center for Health India. Subsequently, he completed his MD Community Medicine from Sri Balaji Medical College and Hospital in Chennai. He has been the first person as a principal investigator to study about the discordant response to ART in patients enrolled in government program in India. Sir has been conferred with Bharat Vikas Award from Institute of Self-Reliance and Vocational Excellence Award from Rotary Club of Ananaga. The International Consortium of uh, Clinical Research Excellence, Ethics and Education has provided a certificate of excellence in clinical research and in community medicine. BIVA Registration Scholarship Award was awarded to Dr. Ganesh sir for attending the second joint conference of British HIV Association with British Association for Sexual Health and HIV, Manchester in UK. Sir has published various research papers in national and international journals. His area of interest are discontent, response to ART, virology, quality of life, 
clinical immunology and public health. And he has also been working on various COVID-19 related publications as a corresponding author. Thank you, sir, for joining with us today. And now I request Ganesh, sir, to take over the session and guide our friends and students to achieve their lab exams. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Raghu, for the introduction. So I hope uh, the screen is visible. Yes, sir. It is, it is visible. And it's in full screen mode. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the IMA uh, and also the Student Association and also the Junior Doctors Association for inviting me for this workshop on Career Guidance uh, Series 1. So, we'll be discussing today regarding the lab. So, uh, first thing is we have so much of opportunity post MBBS. So, we are planning to conduct on a monthly basis this period. So, but on this first series, we'll be discussing about the flag. So some of the options, like you can see for abroad or flag, US MLD, Australian MLD, even now these, uh, the Middle East countries have also come out with their own examination. And they are also uh, different. We call it a prometric exam. So the DHA is the Dubai Health Authority exam and MOH Ministry of Health. Then we have the SAAD, Health Authority of Abu Dhabi. Then we have the DHCC, Dubai Healthcare City Authority exam. Then the subsequent series, we will go on to MRPP, FRCS. Then what are the various masters available in abroad? There are certain masters you can directly uh, pursue like MPS and other fellowship courses. Then research related careers in abroad. And of course, settling in India, uh, we all know now the next is coming up and um, it's in the initial stages. So we'll be uh, getting to know uh, enough details regarding next and also in the coming period, we can discuss about the Union Public Service Commission exam and the State Service Commission exam, then Diplomatic National Board, other fellowship courses in India, NGO-related careers, other research-related careers in India, and also about careers related to World Health Organization and Center for Disease Control. And also, there are other many miscellaneous courses uh, for the MBBS graduate students. So today, going on, we will be discussing about flap. So the first thing is, as a uh, MBBS graduate student, you should have a very good clarity, whether you want to settle in abroad or whether you want to settle in India. So be very clear in your thought process. And once decided, just stick on to it and start preparing for it from the day one. This is my, my uh, humble request. And also this, this should be your first aim and uh, motive. Now going on to the PLAB, like settlement in UK. So the full form of uh, PLAB is Professional and Linguistic Assessment Board Test. We have given the website down below. So if you go into the website, you can get uh, full details uh, about everything, okay? Then these are all the steps in PLAB. The first step is IELTS, giving the exam called IELTS, or the OET. IELTS means International English Language Testing System or Occupational English Testing. Okay, both are nothing but they test your English, uh, la English language skills. Okay, See, previously during our days, only IELTS was accepted to appear for part lab one, but now they allow both either IELTS or OET exam. OET exam, they have started to allow from, I think from February 2018, they are also accepting OET. So it is up to you to decide whether you want to go for IELTS examination or the OET examination. But there are sayings that since we are from the med medical background, nowadays they say we can go for the OET test because it is based on occupational English test. So some people say it is comparatively easy, but I'm not supporting anything. I'm not supporting IELTS or OET. I leave it up to you, whether you take IELTS or OET, it's up to you. But either one of the tests is mandatory to go to the next step. So the next step is flap part one. You clear part flap one, then you go for the flap part two. Then after clearing flap part two, you go to the GMC registration. G 
GMC registration is nothing but General Medical Council registration. Say, for example, we have the NMC, the National Medical Council, previously called as the MCI. So once we pass, we register ourselves in the MCI. Like that, once you pass these three steps, you have to register yourself in the General Medical Council registration, which is, which is the British Council registration for the uh, medical health care worker. So now, the first step in preparation for the PLAB is IELTS or the OET, International English Language Testing System. So you need to know where to apply. So who, who are the people conducting these exams? So the first one is the British Council. So you have British Council in all major cities and also the next organization that is conducting IELTS is the IBP Education Australia and also the Cambridge Assessment of ESOL, English for speakers of other languages. But as far as my knowledge is concerned, we have both the British Council and the IDP Education Australia. It's very much available in all major cities. So you can contact their office and you can book the test. And you can even book the test directly through online also. You can book these English languages. Then the most important thing is, we have two modules in IELTS. One is the academic module, the other one is the general module. For PLAP, to appear for PLAP part one, they accept only the academic module. And another thing, this is the this is the catchy point which you have to understand. The IELTS results are valid only for two years from the date of test. Please, please note down this. It is valid only for two years from exactly from the date of test you are appearing for the exam. After that, it becomes invalid. So the whole process of PLAB requires a lot of planning because this test is valid only for two years. And the modules which are going to be tested for you people are the listening module, reading, writing, and speaking module. And the score which you need to get to pass this, overall you should get a score of 7.5 and individually seven in all the individual modules. Once you get these scores and once you get these marks based on this that we get, you can apply for the lab test. So this is the ILTS test format. So I'm not going in, in deep in depth into the details, but I'm just giving you an overview. So the listening has uh, 40 questions and it, it has 30 minutes will be given for the listening approximately. You will be uh, given some kind of conversation to listen and headphones will be given. And based on the conversations you are listening, questions will be given. And just to transfer your answer, an additional of 10 minutes will also be given. For reading also, again, 40 questions and the time allotted is 60 minutes. So for reading also paragraphs uh, or any kind of uh, essays or match the following, any kind of things will be given and then Based on that, they will be asking questions and then you have to fill it. And the time allotted is 60 minutes. Then writing two tasks. They give two tasks. They may ask you to write an essay on any topic to see that how is your grammar, how is your English language, how is your aptitude, everything they will test on it. And it is 60 minutes. And speaking is three parts. So when one, once you enter inside, they will ask you to introduce yourself. Then uh, there will probably, there will be a lot which has some um, specific thing for you to talk about. So you pick the lot, then what topic comes to you, you have to talk on it. And after that, there will be a general discussion on that topic, or they will try to communicate with you to know how well you speak. And that is only 11 to 14 minutes or approximately 15 minutes. So this is the format for IELTS. Then going on to the OED, Occupational English Test, it's also a similar test. The only thing is, this is for the healthcare professionals. And when you apply for this, there's a category called medicine. So you apply, like you apply for IELTS in the academic uh, module, apply for medicine category. So here also listening is 45 minutes, reading is 60 minutes, writing is given 45 minutes, speaking is 20 minutes. And the minimum grade required is B grade overall. I would like to tell you and give another suggestion. How much, however, you are an expert in English, even if you have studied through English medium or Tamil medium or whatever it is, I strongly recommend you all to go 
for at least one or two months of coaching for the IELTS because uh, it is very much needed. I feel without undergoing a coaching, don't directly go and take the exam. At least a one month coaching so that uh, you will get a full in depth uh, view about what how is the question paper is being set and wh what are the modules how they are. So by virtue of practice. You get more practice, and uh, when you go for the exams, you feel easy. So, just go for a, a, a one month coaching class or a two month coaching class. It might cost around somewhere around fifteen thousand, depending upon the coaching center. Maybe ten to twenty thousand, maybe the cost. I, I would strongly recommend to go for a coaching and then apply for the test. Then, how to book the test? Once you got the result, once you're ready to fill the plug, you need to book through the uh, GMP online account okay you need to book through the gmc uh, online account under my test category see this exam the flap exam what it covers is the common important or the acute conditions those common in emergency departments seen by the trainees entering the second year of foundation program and also they want to know whether you are able to manage the long term conditions seen in primary care setup it's not very advanced thing they won't be asking, but at least you should be able to understand the concept of handling the uh, situation in the primary care setup. See clearly, I put in bold, it excludes the advanced duties of a general practitioner. So it excludes that. So next coming to the blueprint, if you go into the GMC website, you can get the blueprint. But once uh, this uh, webinar is over, I can share the blueprint to all the participants. So we, we will share the blueprint through the email also. I, I request Raghu or any other person to take the responsibility. I can share it to Raghu and you can share the blueprint. Blueprint is nothing. It's like an exact guide to know what the exam covers. It's the kind of portion for your exam. It's the kind of curriculum for the flap. So that is there in GMC website. We can download it so we can give it to you. It sets out the knowledge, skills, and behavior you are expected to demonstrate. Only if you know that, you can prepare for that. And all the topics and skills needed to pass are covered in the blueprint. So this is very, very important. It is kind of a portion. It is kind of a syllabus for us. So we will share the blueprint to you. Then coming on to FLAP part one. See, FLAP part one is a written exam. It has 180, 180 multiple choice questions, which you must answer within three hours. And each starts with a short scenario followed by a question. You need to choose the right answer. So mostly it is an MCQ, multiple choice question. Only thing is here they give five possible answers. From the five possible answers, you have to select the correct uh, answer. Then some people might, students might be uh, thinking, what is the maximum number of attempts being allowed for the flag? See, the maximum number of attempts you are being allowed uh, either for flap one or flap two is four failed attempts. See, but you have an option of appearing even after four an additional attempt. But the criteria is criteria is that must be at least twelve months between your fourth failed attempt and requesting for an additional attempt. And in between during that time, you should have undertaken further learning to improve your medical knowledge and clinical. You must have completed at least 12 months of clinical practice, or you must have completed a postgraduate qualification. This I am telling you, if you have failed flap part one or part two after four attempts, you want to again appear, you should produce this certificate of 12 months clinical practice, or you should have done the postgraduate qualification. If you have already had more than four failed attempts at either part one, flap, or part two, you are no longer eligible to take the test or apply for any additional attempt. But don't think about it. I want our students, all of our students, to pass flap in first attempt or at least in second, second attempt. Please don't ever think about going to more attempts. That's not that, uh, that's not a good thing because it also involves a lot of cost every time when you are appearing for the flap. And if you are granted an additional attempt at flap one, you may need to submit a valid English language evidence for verification. So this is the problem. Once you have failed four times, and by the time the two years would have been lapsed, 
and then again you have to start from the scratch you have to again go to the english language testing system exam then appear for part one then appear for part two so that is the reason slotting of slot from the time of slotting of your language system to the appearance of the slot one and part two you should have a well well planned well planned and your planning should be picture very perfect so i'm just sharing one model question so this also uh, i took it from the gmc website uh, an 89 year old man has a basal cell carcinoma on his forehead which requires excision he has dementia so because naturally he is 89 years old he has dementia the clinical nurse feels he is not competent to give consent for surgery so which is the most appropriate action for obtaining consent so they give this by option ask a psychiatrist to assess his cognitive function ask his general practitioner to sign the consent form ask his wife to sign the consent form or ask the patient to sign the consent form or ask the surgeon to assess his mental capacity see the reason why i have taken this question is i could have taken a completely totally a clinical oriented question which you all feel may be very comfortable but the reason i selected this question is you should understand one of the main component of the flap blueprint and the curriculum is they also want you to know and understand understand about the ethical concerns in uk because some of the portions of the question will be dealing with the ethical concern so that is the reason i have selected this question so if you can clearly see this question it has an ethical component also involved okay so that's the reason it's not only about totally about clinic not only about medicine surgery og community medicine pediatric like that there will be also component about the ethics what is the practice being done in united kingdom you should be aware again another uh, part one model question this is also a, a very major ethical uh, question see the, i will go through the question a 14 year old girl attends the gp general practice surgery requesting the oral contraceptive pill she is a sexually active uh, person and her boyfriend is in the year above her at her school her parents are unaware of the appointment and the request for the oral contraceptive pill which is the most appropriate management advise her about safe sex and prescribe ocp contact her parents contact the local uh, safe safeguarding team or contact the police or explain it is illegal to prescribe ocp for her at this stage see this question you have to understand what is the legal age for for a girl to have a consensual sex so this question also i am putting it there can be these kind of questions will also be in the exam so that you have to have a very strong clarity about the ethical med medical ethical guidelines that is being followed in united kingdom so now going on to part 2 you part part 1 now we are preparing for part, part 2 see part 1 the lab exam you can take in india itself we have many centers you can take in uh, chennai bangalore uh, hyderabad uh, major cities like uh, mumbai kolkata there are uh, many major cities if you go through the gmc website their email with phone numbers everything is given there all major cities you can take part 1 but for part 2 you have to go to uk the lab part 2 is mainly ofki now ofki is no longer new for our indian medical graduates because because of the cbme competency based medical education we are now following ofki in almost in all medical colleges objective structured clinical examination so flap part 2 it is made of 16 scenarios and each lasting for 8 minutes or maybe 8 to 10 minutes okay and aims to reflect real life settings including a mock consultation so mock consultation means may not be a real consultation they give you a scenario and then they will ask you to perform and they will just observe how are you performing so understanding your test results okay they group the skill areas under three main headings or domains first thing is how are you applying your knowledge and experiences regarding the clinical practice next thing is the assessment regarding the good clinical care then how are you going to manage manage and what is your clinical care management and the pass mark is 
you have to understand the pass mark for flap part one or part two it's like like not about 30 percent or 40 percent or 50 percent or 60 percent it is not like that it's not in percentage it has an internationally recognized uh, method called as hang of method okay and it, and include one standard error of measurement so my understanding is this the result for the flap varies from individual group to group okay say for example in your group what is the minimum uh, mark score and what is the maximum mark score and based on this they may have the hang of method and they may get a they will give you one score be, below which you are failed and one mark for one correct answer if you feel your marks have been under marked say for example you are not satisfied with the with the mark what you get you can apply for appealing within 10 days of your result okay within 10 days of your result you can apply to the gmt you can go for a reevaluation then um what what will your scenario uh look like just a minute for flap part two so we are telling about the the mock consultation so there will be 15 patients you'll be given patient and i'm just explaining one uh, scenario so here is a patient who is coming to you with a pain in the head he is mr james Thornton, 45 years old he has called for complaint of pain in his head you are not given any other information you must assess and manage the patient over the telephone or maybe or you must you might assess them directly also you will be given eight minutes to complete the scenario what will the examiner be looking for you have to know this the examiner wants to see you demonstrating the behaviors that we expect of a doctor they will mark you against three domains again how you gather the data the technical and assessment skills and what are the clinical management skills you are following and interpersonal skills uh yeah so then what will you need to demonstrate to pass see the first thing is when a patient coming to you with headache say they want to know whether you take the appropriate history like what are the aggravating factors relieving factors where is the headache it's a frontal or occipital or what is the location what is the duration number of days and what are the triggering factors relieving factors whether you are asking them and taking a medical history of if he had taking any medication that is aggravating headache or did he have any recent trauma and what is his lifestyle like alcohol diet is his sex sexual habits his sleep pattern and identify patients concern listen appropriately and display empathy see this is the most important thing which you have to understand this is actually nowadays started to becoming a, a lagging nowadays this empathy we not only uh, in India, everywhere we see uh, the empathy is coming down. So we have to emphasize nicely on this empathy. Empathy means like understanding the patient's feeling from his perspective. A person coming to you with a very throbbing headache, you have to understand his, his pain. So you have to empathize that. So they also see that, whether you are empathizing that. So that component is also analyzed when you are having the conversation. So then finally you come to the diagnosis probably you can give a diagnosis you can give a diagnosis of migraine or if not possible you can at least give a probable provisional diagnosis you may say i may go for further investigation depending upon the case and recommend appropriate management and how fluently you are conducting and how professionally you are dealing with the patient then these are some of the resource material uh, there are these are the websites uh, uh, which i found it has 3400 plus question bank and you can download the blueprint from the below link and i strongly recommend all of you to buy this oxford handbook of clinical medicine and also oxford handbook of clinical speciality okay so the most important thing we are now coming is the cost involved okay the cost involved see for ilts the cost is fifteen thousand five hundred. i already told you can go for ilts or oet ilts somewhere around fifteen thousand five hundred. for oet it is somewhere around 30 to thirty-three thousand approximate inr and the cost for flap part one is 
23,687 approximate INR. And for flap part two, it's 86,840. This is effective from 1st April 2022. Then the travel expenses to UK for flap part two and accommodation. See this, I cannot tell because it depends upon the time of you booking the flight ticket, your comfort zone, whether you want to fly in economy class or whether you want to fly in a business class and what kind of accommodation you want to have. I strongly recommend that you have a friend or a relative so that you get the accommodation free there and you book the ticket well in advance so that the costing can be reduced. So then after passing flap one, flap two, you have to go for the GMC registration. There are two registrations. One is the registration fee for the newly qualified doctors. Actually, they give some concessions. Um, say, for example, the application for provisional registration is coming around somewhere around 5,000. And the application for full registration for the newly qualified for license to practice is around 15,431. If you are not a newly qualified doctor, the standard fee to join the GMC for registration is somewhere around uh, 420 pounds, uh, which comes around 40,257. Even if you want to uh, go to UK, license to practice for a temporary period, for a visiting as an eminent specialist also, you have to pay. So now you have to understand who gets the discounted fee. So as of 1st April 2018, the person who gets the discounted application fee applies to doctors who hold or have previously held provisional registration and for doctors who submit their application within five years of passing the primary medical education. So that is the definition for newly qualified doctors. And do not hold or have not previously held provisional registration. So this is the discounted, discounted fee covers and it only covers your first full year of registration. Then after that, you have to go for the standard medical registration fee. So these are all the references uh, which I got from the GMC. I, I thank you all very much. And I thank the IMA, I thank the Junior Doctors Network. Uh, going in, in my younger days, I did not get any kind of guidances like this. And generally, the biggest mistake we all do is after passing MBBS during the CRRA period, we all feel that's the period to enjoy. Uh, life is, yeah, of course, you have to have a balance between the enjoyment and also between the study. So during CRRA, yes, you can have fun, you can enjoy, but at the same time, you have to start preparing for the exam. So from my experience, I would say, once you finish this path form and micro, you start putting the, preparing for the MCQ. And by the time you finish, you would have been ready for the MCQ for two years. And then you can, after the CRI is over, you can go for the ILTS, and then you can go for the flap part one and part two. My understanding is if you are really good and if you are really hardworking, you will land up and reach, reach UK within one and a half years. So my ambition in life during those days was to settle down in UK, but it, due to certain reasons, it did not happen. But at least because of this presentation and because of this small guidance, which I have researched and I have presented to you, if at least few students out of this presentation go to UK and settle down in UK and you all become a great doctor and serve there. And if you are happy, I'm very happy. And this is my mobile number for any other future guidance, you can contact me. And also you can note on the website, which is given down. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. If any audience has any question to be posted, please kindly put in the chat box so that sir can answer. Somebody is right? posting wonderful session. I don't know who is it. Oh, okay. 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 So meanwhile, I'll just deliver the vote of thanks so that if you have any queries or if you have any doubts, kindly put in the chat box. Can I uh, stop sharing the screen, Raghu? Yes, sir. Uh, just a second. Uh, Batul, are you there? Yes, sir, I'm there. there. I'm there. Yeah. Uh, uh, please let us know if there are any questions coming up in the chat box. Okay, sir, I'm checking with that only. As of now, we haven't received any questions. Just a okay. second. Give me a Raghu, moment. Actually, I have a doubt. See, this participant shows tier 5. So they have a separate uh, list of uh, the participants. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It will be through a separate window. 
So, do you have any idea how many participants have joined today? I'll just uh, inform you at the end of the session, sir. Okay, okay. So, any comments from your side regarding the session, Dr. Abdul sir, uh, Venkatesh sir, what do you feel? Uh, so I have been uh, 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 listening to your session for the past 30 minutes. It's been uh, very crisp and uh, you have given what is most needed. Okay. So even I'd uh, like to share my experience where uh, at my time I was more interested in uh, giving PLAB exam. Yeah. Uh, and at the time I, I found it extremely difficult to deal with IELTS, especially in the writing part. So okay. then only uh, we got this OET as a new trend and yes. things followed. But now uh, you can go for OET also. Yeah. Yes, yes, but by the time we got struck by COVID pandemic and everything changed. Okay. So uh, your session, like if uh, like your session would be very much useful. At least uh, people get to have a get to know that okay, where can we get the further details? So you have yeah. shared the link of GMC and you yeah. have guide. Uh, you have shared few useful resources also. Yes, I think yes. uh, all this will be of a uh, very great help to our students, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. I think Dr. Abul Hassan sir is there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, th uh, thank you, Dr. Ganesh. Uh, it was a really wonderful presentation. You, were, you were, uh, really simplified uh, many of the tough areas. I think definitely your talk might have uh, enthused many people to, you know, kind of think about taking this career. I think, uh, you know, in future, I think uh, there are, there will be a lot of people, more and more people would like to come for this uh, pl taking PLAB, uh, you know, uh, because uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, they we will have to give them more options now. Otherwise, uh, people will get uh, you no know, frustration. Even in the studying medicine during um, uh, MBBS time itself, uh, if they get to know all these options available after MBBS, uh, the kind of uh, pessimism will not be there. They will be very optimistic and also. They will be. They will start focusing in the beginning itself. Uh, settling in UK, take a cracking club is one of the best options outside India. I can say that, yeah. and uh, definitely uh, we should promote this. And uh, uh, you know, uh, otherwise uh, there will be a lot of. Uh, you will one day we will hear that unemployment <laughs> for doctors in India. So that scenario. It's a fast approaching, uh, so we will have to take this much. And uh, my one more kind request, sir. I know you have been doing this for a long time. Yeah. So I would like to collaborate with you people, like bring in more experts, and uh, you would like yes, to continue yes. the series, like US yeah. and Mali. Yeah. Maybe yeah. even foreign speakers. I can bring some foreign speakers also if interested, yeah, yeah. and we can share about real uh, kind of experiences. I, this was only a overview. Yes, so that we yes. can elaborate on it. We can elaborate on it. So uh, we will think about it later. Yes, yes. But thank you so much, sir, for that. We will expand. Definitely, we will expand. Our <laughs> thank you, sir. Sure, sir. Thank you so much, sir. And we have received many questions in the chat box. Yeah. Dr. Suranya has asked, FMGs can directly apply for PLAB without having Indian license, or is it necessary to clear foreign medical graduate exam? Uh, FMG means what she really means. Like studied from a foreign medical foreign medical uh, college and they are uh, writing exam in India to clear, uh, to get license from India, right? So if they really wanted to get the license from India to pursue, to write PLAB exam, or they can directly write PLAB exam after graduating from foreign medical college. Uh, this is a very, very difficult question. See, now, uh, recently, the Indian government guidelines are just, they're just framing some guidelines. They are telling even from any country you are graduating, you have to uh, you have to uh, clear this exam. But it also depends upon in which country they have done that FMG. Okay, so if they have done that in a country uh, which is being uh, recognized, it's been recognized by the GMC. They can directly go for it. If the exam which they are doing is directly recognized, they can directly go for the Plan. But if it is not recognized, if they say it has to be recognized through the Indian government, then they have to come through the Indian government and clear it and then go. So this is my understanding. Okay, sir. Dr. Shakti Kumaraswamy asked whether age criteria is there for PLAB exams. There is no age criteria for PLAB exams. 
even a 45 or 50 years old guy in UK is still considered as an young person. That is the biggest advantage. At any age, you can go. But the only thing is, you have it's better you start early because the residency program, you have to climb up the ladder. If you're very old and you are already doing very well here, after plus, because how much they recognize our Indian degree and experience is a big question, so that you will be again be placed in the basic level, like a residency program. So that might be difficult for them. So it is always better to start early, but we are also planning to uh, have a next session called as the GP, General Practitioner Session, where in which you don't need to write the PLAB exam, directly based on your experiences and degree, you can directly write the GP exam. There is a bridge course is there. So that we will discuss in the next workshop. Thank you, sir. And Dr. Dev has asked, is it better to apply for PLAB exam after PG or before PG? It, it's, it's all depends. See, I say, uh, the, if you are if you are going to uh, uh, want to go to UK so early, you can apply before PG also because you are going because your PG degree is not recognized there. So rather you directly finish up and do and just apply for the PLAB, go there and do the MRTP or FRTS or any other PG, maybe in diabetes or something in OG, whatever you want, you work there and then you go for it. Or else, if you are preparing for these exams and you are studying here for three years, four years. You are again wasting because your degree here is not recognized there. Again, you are going to go only from the thing. But another one good thing happening now is even without lab also, nowadays you can directly apply for MRTP and MRTP examination centers are directly now available in India. You also have to understand. You can do the do the Indian post-graduation degree. Simultaneously, you can do the MRTP also without appearing for PLAB also. That option is also there. Okay. PLAB is the one option. There is an option for GP. You can have an option for direct MRTP also. But okay. only thing is in MRTP, if you write in India, bracket, they will put MRTP India, IND. If you are getting the degree from UK, they will put MRTP UK. That will be the difference. Okay. Other other uh, UAE. Okay. Any so, so this PLAB exam is uh, only applicable in UK or is it applicable in even Canada and other countries, sir? Mm, uh, I, I think uh, PLAB exam is basically applicable in UK and uh, US, they have a separate uh, exam, USMLE. And Australia, they have a separate exam. But if you have cleared PLAB or MRTP, the Middle East countries are accepting. Okay. So, and another question are applying, uh, accepting. Okay. Now, firstly, there was very uh, informative session. Thank you. I actually want to ask that if my CV is not so great or if I haven't done many research, but I did my postgraduate from good college, whether I have a chance to get interviews after PLAB 2. Yes, sir. The, the question to be answered is, see, uh, it also involves a little bit of luck, you know, always in life. But the thing is, if you're not trying, you're not trying. If you're writing an exam, there are two options. You pass, you fail. If you don't write the exam, you fail. So like that, Okay, even if you don't have a strong research background also, but you have you will be having some clinical experience background. But if you are really young, in, if you're not very old, maybe like 30 or even in your 35, I would say if you want to go and work there, you can appear for PLAP or you can directly appear for MRTP and you can go there and work. Uh, they may not be seeing much into your research uh, thing unless until it is a totally research-based career. Because for because what I mean to say now is because of the COVID pandemic and also people are expecting more and more pandemic in future, they need a lot of general practitioners also. They need a lot of doctors now. So it's not only about research. They need huge manpower throughout the world, huge manpower. And we have lost so many lives in COVID pandemic, especially doctors' lives. So there is nothing harm in trying even without a research background also. 
You see nowhere in the plab, there is no mark for the research background. You see, it's ILTS part one and part two. But of course, when there is two people coming together with the same mark, and if the competition is so heavy, then they might look into your research component. But passing is one thing, getting a residency program is another thing. It also involves a little bit of hard work, applying into so many organizations, staying there for some time and trying your luck. It's the same thing. Not all neurosurgeons become a great neurosurgeon. Not all cardiologists become a great. Not all gold medalists shine very well in life. It's all something like that. It's just we have to take the risk. We don't know what happens. Okay. Thank you, sir. And here we have Dr. Surya asking, after I complete my GMC registration, what is the next step? Can I straight away join my PG or should I work there before... Uh, for a few yeah, yeah. years before I'm eligible to join a PG course. No, no, yeah, you have to you have to join the residency. After PLAP 2, you have to do the registration, then there is some kind of traineeship will be there, that will be the residency program. Only after that, you will go for it. Is there any tuition fees to do the uh, PLAP 2 exam or other things in the upcoming year, sir? The tuition fees, in the sense I told now already for part two, the fees is around 89,000 you have to pay. Okay. But I'm not sir, exactly I'm, sure if hmm. there any institution is really training in India. That part I'm not exactly sure. Okay. So post PG, can we join directly FRCS or we have to again go with the MRCAP or MRCS and then we have to go for a so, FRCS and MRCP are two different things. Okay. MRCP is a member of Royal College of Physician. FRCS is a fellow of Royal College of Surgery. And uh, for, for you to apply, I, I think you have to have some basic uh, two to three years of working experience. That certificate is needed. Based on that, without lab also, you can directly apply from India. Okay. Uh, but now, through lab also, after going there also, you can apply. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. And then what is the basic salary for doctors after completing their lab exam and joining residency there? Dr. Uh, Shaikh uh, Ahmed. Uh, my and uh, uh, see, I have not looked into it, but it's just a, maybe a wild guess. I would say it will not be uh, maybe less than uh, two lakhs Indian rupees, not less than that, two to two point five, two point two five, something like that. I'm not exactly sure about it. Okay, sir. I, I and, need to uh, ask my friends over there in UK. Twenty five of my college mates are settled in UK. I need to ask them. If you want, I can ask and I can reply the question. Sure, sir. Thank I, you. I feel it should be around somewhere around two lakhs. And one good thing is, while doing the PG itself, you will be earning so much. Okay. The biggest uh, the cost is finding a place to live in UK. I have been in UK for 15 days. I went for this British HIV Association conference. One of the biggest challenge for me was the the the, the accommodation. But but the food and everything, everything you can you can bring, you can cook, you can manage. But the accommodation is the biggest thing. And where you have the accommodation also matters. Whether it's in central London or it is in um, Brighton, Sussex, or which location also matters. And accommodation is the main thing. But of course, you have the uh, youth hostels, everything. You can manage for a few. But that costing is really the one thing you have to bear in mind. Of course, you should need to have some good background to search job for a uh, few months till you get a job. There is no guarantee you finish the flap immediately, you may not get a residency. You have to wait. It's similar like us only now. Immediately you finish, there is no guarantee. Immediately you finish your PG, there is no guarantee. I finish MD community medicine means there is no guarantee I will get a job. I have to apply for so many institutions. I have to prove myself, then only you will get a job. It's all the same everywhere. Thank you, sir. And finally, we have one enthusiastic uh, first year medical student who want to ask how to start my preparation from the first year and study all the three subjects in correlation with this uh, PLAB exams. <laughs> okay. Um, to that first year, my answer is, see, you just now concentrate in your first year examination. But now, Fortunately, we have this competency-based medical education has been started very well in India. And we also have something called as early clinical exposure. 
can you ask him from he is from which college i hope in his college the early clinical exposure is being conducted if the early clinical exposure is being conducted it makes things easy for him because simultaneously they will have a theory in anatomy they will also have show a ca case of breast cancer they will also show how breast cancer will be in the radiological finding so so we do a horizontal and vertical integration is being done so when they get that level of exposure because of the competency based medical education i feel from first year onwards they will try to get a better understanding about the clinical subjects also but i strongly say my advice this is my advice only it's my personal advice you first finish off your anat physio biochem because that is the toughest part and the toughest portion once you finish off that then you start simultaneously um, start working on the plab mcqs every year you start doing some 500 1000 mcqs like that by the time you reach the final year you will become expert and then it will be easy for you once you finish this yarrai that is my thing so always give more importance to anatomy physio and biochem and because of cbme it might be easy for him but concentrate more in the first year i would say after path like when they finish somewhere near path form micro then they can start completely entering into the preparation of part 1 mcqs this is my opinion i may not be right it differs from person to person and it also differs from individual person's perception capability knowledge hard working skills it involves lot of things so which i don't know about him i cannot directly guide him without knowing all these things about him yes sir thank you and last but not the least uh, there is a question that uh, like in uh, like uh, the last one we have uh, mbbs uh, graduates from the foreign medical colleges they have to write fmg and only practice in india similarly is there any uh, anything uh, any criteria once they complete their uh, post graduation from the foreign medical college and come back uh, i am not i am not exactly sure i need to verify that I, still i don't have a better clarity about that because this is only a overview about the blood so that level i didn't think sorry i cannot answer i cannot answer the question which i don't know okay sir sure i guess yes, uh, all the all the remaining questions we can just answer in the upcoming say, next uh, session and uh, that, my number is being shared you can share they can call me directly they can whatsapp me i can uh, uh, send and one more thing i'll share the blueprint that that gives the full portion for the class so that that can also be mailed to everyone so that they feel more comfortable in looking at i'll share it by whatsapp you can immediately while you are sending the e certificate you can share the blueprint to them so that they will know the full curriculum the portion sure sir thank you sir okay. and uh, on behalf of medusin ima junior doctors network uh, medical students network and hedal i would like to thank dr abul hasan sir president elect ima tnsb and chairman of ima junior doctors network and medical students network tamil nadu for joining with us today and uh, motivating and guiding the uh, students who have joined this uh, meeting and i would like to thank our today's speaker dr ganesh sir who has uh, given an excellent uh, guidance on the plab exams and also the career opportunities they have post mbbs i would like to i would like to request him for continuing the sessions in future days and also to bring more and more uh, useful sessions for the undergraduates and also for the junior doctors and i would like to thank dr manigandan mohanda sir state convener of ima junior doctors network tamil nadu and dr venkatesh kartikeyan sir general secretary of ima junior doctors network tamil nadu last but not the least i would like to thank clarinet who had been a great support for the technical purposes thank you so much ma'am and i would like to thank all the audience who have joined today i i request you all to keep a close uh, eye on all the sessions which we are conducting in the future too and join them and get benefited thank you so much
Before concluding, I would also like to thank each one of you present here. Team Clearnet is happy and proud to be the digital partner for the session. And Team Clearnet will be looking forward for such more sessions from your end as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Clearnet, for inviting me. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you, everyone. We will close the session now.